Hello and welcome to a Squadron 42 development update looking at what Clown and Pyram have been working on for Star Citizen's single player campaign over the last few weeks and what they're focused on now in September. Now, potentially due to the Road to Citizen Con, because we've got Citizen Con in October, there's a bit of holding back on what Cloud and Pyram are telling us about some Squadron 42 and Star Citizen sort of development features and lots of stuff like that so there are lots of features that appear to be wrapping up for squadron 42 just before citizen con so it's very possible that they're going to be showing us off a lot of new information and progress there some people are expecting a sort of um squadron 42 release date but the truth is we don't know we don't know what they're going to show us at citizen con but it does appear highly likely that they are going to share some bits about that game. Now, Clown Pyramid have given us a load of updates on various teams and what they've been working on in their latest monthly report for Squadron 42. And let's start with the Gameplay Features team. They've been working on vehicle radar landing UIs. So to begin with, the team investigated rendering the environment outside of a ship in the vehicle's radar display, similar to the minimap. So players can see the area they intend to land on. The geometry will be marked up, so will only display the relevant landing area. They've been working on some camera transitions from first person to third person and to cinematic scenes smooth transitions to cinematic cameras for example if the player is in a cockpit seat the team can create a camera transition out through the windscreen for better visual flow they've been working on crane controller functionality and they've made improvements to hints and tutorials various mobiglass functionality and notifications vehicle features work towards closing out the self status ui filling out missing features in the various sub screens including information on quantum travel and fuel related to this the turret variant of the self status mfds can now render a 3d model of the turret they're receiving ui art support on those features the vehicle loadout terminal is approaching feature complete with the addition of special features for group equipping items for example changing a single ship thruster will change the others if required or equipping a specific missile will automatically swap to the correct missile rack additionally the ui art team is creating a 3d augmented reality display for the vehicle loadout terminal this will be located in the idris's hangar where players can customize their ships so before a mission, you'll basically choose a ship loadout. Vehicle features began looking into changes to vehicle aiming, exploring a feature similar to ADS aim down sights. This will allow players to zoom in on their target and receive additional aiming assistance to target subcomponents or line up a better shot. This is still being explored. Progress was made on the resource network with the team providing support for various vehicle items that use fuel and power, such as quantum drives and thrusters. Thrusters using power is one of the more complicated aspects of this, so they're still working through it. It. Vehicle features also supported the level design team on their gameplay sequences, providing bug fixing and technical support for smaller features to aid with building out levels and experiences. Most of the last few weeks of the gameplay stories focus has been on supporting the strike team with improvements and additions around the Idris. This involved refactoring and supporting the recently created deck crew track views and adding additional idle animations and improved prop interactions to the mess hall scenes. They also spent a few days working on the new turret content to add additional life to these areas. New mocap data was used to incorporate several dialogue changes to key character scenes requested by design. They also created several resolve and out of animations to help characters exit their scenes and return to AI control. They then started working on upcoming narrative shoots. They have about 20 new gameplay story scenes being recorded and they're keen to ensure the resulting data can be implemented as smoothly as possible. Level Design continued to work on the Idris's intersituals, basically the in-between scenes, the sort of stories that you might overhear or uh, the conversations between NPCs that you could happen upon. Outside of scene maintenance, and updates the social narrative team worked closely with ai content pushing hard on crew behaviors this included supporting the implementation of background vignettes in the idris hangar for use after a player lands these include the deck crew pushing ladders up to the gladius and climbing on top and carrying out maintenance refueling the ship and carrying out cockpit and weapons checks the same was then done for pre-flight vignettes with the deck crew prepping the players for ship for takeoff with thruster and weapons checks they also started work on having the previously 
static Idris moving during these intersituals, which is subtle but makes a difference. Narrative was heavily involved in the recent performance capture shoots. This included interfacing with the level designers to solidify the flow of levels and scripts, as well as working with the core gameplay and audio teams to detail wildline scripts for characters. These include some new characters that had been introduced in the latest levels, as well as pickups for a handful of returning actors that had been previously captured. Part of these lines included buddy AI designs for both FPS and flight sections that had been implemented since the last time they had been captured. They've got a load of work done on subtitles and they continue to delve into some of the collectibles that players will be able to find scattered throughout levels. They also progressed with defining the categories and content that will go into Squadron 42's Galactopedia. Audio work towards a major milestone. The aim of this is to provide sound effects for all the work done by the upstream strike teams and identifies any required post alpha changes or improvements. The tech team made significant progress on the crowd audio system, which is called Walla, which is close to first pass complete. This system groups NPCs into clusters based on their proximity, allowing for dynamic localized audio that simulates ambient chatter. Resonance tech progressed as well, which was detailed in an Inside Star Citizen episode sort of shaking and rattling on ships that helps produce an ambience in the background, but also is very much associated with actions and how they travel. They also continue to ensure that the game builds um, remain stable during development so that devs can work seamlessly on them. They've been getting uh, cinematic animations um, sort of paired properly with Foley sound effects. They continue to design and implement effects for a variety of Squadron 42 specific weapons, including the Vault Manufacturer, ensuring the sounds align with its bold, high-tech designs. Now, interestingly, they said Squadron 42 specific weapons, which it seems weird. Why wouldn't you bring them in for Persistent Universe? They probably will in the future. They are excited to get the brawny impact of the Galson shotgun and the Vault Sniper into our hands. There was also a significant push to create and improve sound effects for various puzzles found throughout the campaign, every puzzle being in some way unique. This opens the doors to providing distinctive and innovative sounds. In-game gadgets, including flashbangs, also received fine-tuning and new implementations. And they're making sure that locations and buildings and all that sort of stuff have subtle ambience to them too. The animators collaborated with the level design and AI designers to close out animations across various locations, including the med bay, bridge, mess hall, and hangar. Assumedly that's on the Idris, um, but might also be on the Javelin. They're currently improving the overall feel of players' actions through uh, slides basic movement, weapon usage, and more. This involves adjusting weapon malfunctions, first-person interactions with the environment, such as opening hatches, first selects for new weapons, and a selection of other animations. Additionally, progress was made on combat AI for both enemies and civilians, and animation worked with narrative and design to get level-specific scenes implemented correctly. The motion capture team worked alongside the writers to add the finishing narrative touches to certain areas and supported spot improvements to AI behaviors. On the facial side, the team completed a large number of behavioral lines and performances to bring flight combat, ground combat, and background ambience to life. They also progressed with polished tasks for the cast characters. Most of the AI updates we've actually covered in the Star Citizen Persistent Universe Monthly Report, which I will link down below, but in addition to those, there are a few others. Uh, vehicle AI's priority over the last few weeks has been going through issues preventing the new AI features from working correctly. They fixed faults with the recent aiming system refactored to ensure NPCs shoot correctly and worked with level design to fix various miscellaneous problems, causing AI to not work in certain places. They're now focusing on game-wide flight AI improvements as they continue to fine-tune the gameplay experience throughout the flight sections. Changes and fixes were also made to the tactical point system, which is used to drive where the AI moves. This will help identify what needs to be adjusted when reviewing combat in new locations. Balancing was done for AI ammunition usage while maintaining reload and ammo finding functionality to provide realistic and emergent behaviors and gameplay situations. Boom! That's it for your Squadron 42 updates this time. I am really interested to know what you think. Do you think we're going to see some Squadron 42 stuff at CitizenCon? Do you think we could 
potentially see them have a release date sort of lined up. They go, next year, it's going to be out by this date. Boom. Does it look to you as well that a lot of Squadron 42 development is actually getting there? They're actually pushing towards the end of a lot of these features and sort of development sort of loops and cycles for a load of the stuff there. And yes, they still need to get a load of the core mechanics still completed, but a huge portion of that sort of level design stuff and the ships and the scenes and the locations and all the sort of connecting material, cinematics uh, and this general story, that's all pretty much wrapping up now. Do you think it's going to be Answer the Call 2024 or do you think it's going to be 2024 Missed Calls? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. NordVPN is amazing and you should buy it. It's so useful, it's easier to tell you what it can't do. NordVPN can't do your taxes. Nord, how much do I owe for VAT? NordVPN can't help you buy more spaceships. Nord, add a terrapin to my shopping cart. NordVPN can't cook for you. No, my cabbages! And NordVPN can't be your girlfriend. Can't or won't NordVPN, if that is your real name. NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer will help you connect to the internet more safely, securely, and anonymously, with greater access to the content you want. But can I teach it to love? Links below for the best NordVPN deals around. Every month we have a ship giveaway, and for September, that's for the Drake Corsair, that fantastic exploration ship. Not only will you be able to explore the verse with it, but the ship is perfectly competent at a huge range of gameplay, and is a fantastic mission running ship. You can use it for cargo, you can put some vehicles in there, it's reasonably good in a fight. One of the true multi-role, multi-crew ships. To be in for a chance of winning one of those, just comment on any of my videos made during the month. More details down below. Also down below are links to be able to support the channel more. There's the join button, making you one of my elite channel members. You'll get occasional exclusive content. There's also YouTube badges and emotes to show your support. There's also Patreon for those of you that prefer that. We try to mirror the rewards on there as well. But just people liking, subscribing, and sharing these videos goes a long way. A heartfelt thank you to everyone that watched the video. I hope you have a great September, and I'll see you in the verse.